Welcome back, Willis Sness. Uh, Hi! Season 6, episode 3.5, question mark? 3B. 3B? Yeah, okay, okay. So, uh, you know, but... You know, as we always uh, inform you, we, we're reviewing uh, Super Nintendo games, raking it against each other uh, to see which is the best Super Nintendo games out there and which is the worst. Oh, heck, sometimes being in the middle of the road ain't so bad after some of the ones that we played. We are uh, the experts in this. So, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but we probably know more about the shitty games than, we <laughs> want than the average person. So, uh, you know, we have a randomizer wheel that chooses our game. And we got Kirby Superstars, eight games in one. And uh, so uh, this game is, this is eight total games that are uh, uh, you know, on one cartridge. So uh, me and Josh last week. I wouldn't even say it's eight games. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we covered about, uh, I don't know, probably five of the eight games I yeah. think last week. And so uh, instead of having one episode that is two and a half hours long over Kirby, we're coming back on this episode and we're going to finish doing the three games that we missed. Uh, That's the as, B part. Yes, mm-hmm. as well as uh, fun facts. Uh, price charting. Price charting. And ranking. Yeah, and ranking. And uh, so with all that being said, Josh, uh, I mean, I, I'm ready to be done with Kirby. You know, I, yeah. I guess we're going to, we're also going to give our... I've got a few make it and break it's for the game in general. Yep. I know we're making and breaking every single game in here. But it's but, an uh, overall. Yeah. We have to rank the game overall. So let me get us pulled up here, Josh, to figure out what the three that we had left on. It was, uh, let's see here. We done the uh uh, Dino, uh, spring I, breeze went breezy spring spring breeze. I know the ones that we haven't done. I just can't remember the name. I'm pulling them up real quick. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. It was what was it? We did not play Milky Way. That's right. Uh, wishes. Uh, I can't remember if we did the Great Cave Offensive, Arena, and Mega Knight. We'll go over them real quick anyways. I do I, know we done Spring Breeze, we done Dino Blade, we done Gourmet Race. Then we did two mini games. And then we done two of the mini games, okay. which was uh what was it? Sir Samurai Kirby, I think is what yeah. one of them was. And wasn't it Megaton Punch? The yes. the punchy one? Yes. Yeah. So so the ones we got left is the Great Cave, okay. Revenge of Meta Knight, yep. and then Milky Way, and the Arena, I guess. Yeah, I, I guess, uh, I want to save the Arena for last, I think. Yeah. Well, let's go Cave Offensive, Meta Knight, and then Milky Way Wishes. Sounds good. Uh, so just going to jump right in. Uh, you know, I don't think there was anything from the other games that, uh, that I felt like we left out there. So uh, the Great Cave Offensive... Was one of the games on the uh, the Kirby Kart, and uh, this one is definitely kind of like Gourmet Race. When you turn on Gourmet Race, you know it's different than the other Kirby yep. games because I felt like two of the damn games, if not three of them, last week is like, hey, it's a Kirby game. It's just like every other Kirby game, kind of like it has that it has that flow. Feel. You get to Gourmet Race, and you're like, I don't know what the hell this is. It's got Kirby in it, but this is a weird game. It's a bullshit uh, game, is what it is. So Cave Offensive. I don't know. Uh, I felt like Gourmet Race could have. That's the one I wanted to be my favorite. Uh, Cave Offensive had a little bit uh, different twist to it. Uh, and I don't know if I would say it's my favorite, but it definitely stood out as being different. different. Di- being different. It did. Uh, so I don't know if you would basically call this one more of kind of like a little bit of a dungeon crawler almost. That's what uh, it felt to me. So basically what's happening in the Great Cave Offensive is instead of playing the stages like you typically do, you've got four different areas and they've got treasure chests hidden through it. So the whole purpose of the game is to go and uh, find uh, these treasure chests. And there's stuff in the treasure chest i think that's what makes the charm of the game yep that makes it like it's a tip of the hat uh 
like one of the games I think that is probably one of my favorite games that I've played that tips his hats to a bunch of different games of different genres is Astro's Playroom on PS5. <laughs> like I love being able to see those little bits or yeah. whatever they are acting out scenes from other games. Yeah, those little and, bots. And, and so it makes it kind of charming, and I think that's kind of what happens in Great Cave Offensive. Uh, so uh, a couple of things, I guess, to get into Cave Offensive is... It feels like a damn Kirby game, you yeah. know. From that, from the get go, it, it, they kind of abandon the uh, traditional uh, Kirby style game. But if you're a Kirby fan, it's got it's Kirby. You're it, sucking off enemies. You are still sucking off enemies, and you're still a floaty pink fuck. And I think that there's probably a little bit more strategy in it, a lot more backtracking, which isn't necessarily bad. Yeah. Certain games like Zelda does it well. Kirby was just okay with it. Yeah. Uh, probably one of my favorite parts in there is some of the treasures that you find uh, have references to other Nintendo games. That's the whole reason yeah. it got gets me in there. Like you've got a uh, uh, Falcon's helmet from F Zero. Yep. Uh, I think there's an Earthbound reference. There's a Triforce in there. Yep. And uh, so it's kind of cool that Kirby's finding parts of other games. And that, for me, bar none, was the best part of the game to me. I agree. Uh, it is kind of crazy that instead of just going stage to stage, it's like, hey, there's 60 treasure chests. Find these treasure chests. So uh, I guess uh, just doing quick make it and break it on these. I can't really remember exactly how last week's episode went <laughs> as far as this. <laughs> Is it still just it didn't catch my attention that much. There was a little yeah. more strategy, but still kind of an easy Kirby game. Solid twenty minutes. Yeah, I mean, if you don't play it, it's because if you don't win it, it's because you've lost interest. Yeah, it. that's the thing. And, and it, it's hard for me to keep interest. And it's not necessarily Kirby's fault because in today's day and age of YouTube and the stuff that you can see, all the viral clips, yeah, the games at, at your fingertips, it. it kind of fell flat like a lot of the other Kirby games on holding my attention. Yep. Uh, but it, it, it was definitely different. Uh, I can understand if you were a Kirby purist that Kirby you may purist. you may absolutely hate fucking Great Cave Offensive and I understand it and I can understand it if you loved it. To me it was just indifferent. It was just a different type of game. It was kind of nice when you're playing all these games together that this one was a little different than the others. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. So, uh, I don't think I have a whole lot more to put in on Great Cave Offensive. Uh, is there anything you want to say on it, John? No, I, I do not have anything to add to it. Like I said, you covered it. Like I said, the biggest thing about it that was really cool is, like I said, you had all of those little Easter eggs, but they weren't really Easter eggs. They, right. were, they were put in there intentionally, so that was really cool. And that that is kind of smart, too, because it's like, some, I appreciate a good Easter egg, but sometimes you're putting the stuff in there to be seen. So sometimes it's like, don't get too fancy with it. Kind of like, say, the Astros Playroom yep. is like trying to find certain stuff that's hidden so much that 90% of the people won't see it. I can understand in certain games, like maybe even like a Batman or like some of these RPGs that be in there. But uh, for this, it's like you made it to be seen. It's not necessarily hard. You got to think a little bit more, yep. I think, in a typical Kirby game, which isn't bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree with all that, too. So, uh, I guess the next one we're going to roll over to is Revenge of Meta Knight. So, <laughs> I didn't know who Meta Knight really was before I played Kirby. I knew, I, I recognized D to D or whatever. King D to D. I didn't know that that was what, I couldn't have told you it was from that franchise, but you see it. So, Meta Knight, I've seen Meta Knight before. Yeah. I didn't know that was a Kirby-driven property, you know. Uh, it's Kirby whenever he's in a bad mood. <laughs> so, uh, Kirby, uh, the Revenge of Meta Knight is uh, uh, basically Kirby's trying to stop Meta Knight from taking over Dreamland. Yep. Uh, I guess he thinks all the inhabitants uh, uh, are lazy and... Uh, yeah, about <laughs> and and I don't understand why he really cares about that or she whatever Meta Knot is. So uh, the the difference with this game is it is a Kirby game with a twist, yep. like about each other. One of these is this one, I guess, is more of kind of like a speed run Kirby because the there's a time limit and you lose a life if you don't finish within the time limit. Yep. Uh, 
A little bit more brutal because Mario it also has a time limit in it too. Super Mario World and a lot of the Mario games in general. This one here was a bit more aggressive. And and I guess at the end of each stage, you know, you're taking down the damn battleship or whatever. But basically, to me, this is just like every other Kirby game. Except, like I say, maybe it's a little more aggressive, but it's got a time limit on it. Yeah. So, uh, uh, that's kind of different. But to me, the uh, it's... it's Kirby, just a slight twist on yeah, it, you know. That's all at, it is. That's all it is. It, it, you take a lot of the other Kirby games, and the stuff that's good about them Kirby games is good on this, and, and you know, the music, and, yep. the, you know, it's kind of got a charm, and then the bad stuff about it kind of being a little bit easy or very limited on what you do, it's the same thing. Yep. Uh, so, uh, you think that's cool enough on that one, Josh? On Revenge of Mad or Not? Yeah, I think that hits it pretty much. Nail on the head. So, uh, the last, or not the last one, the next to last is, uh, which, uh, I know Milky Way Wishes is one, and it might be the arena. I know there's two of them. I don't know if on your emulator it was, but two of them are locked that you have to unlock by playing yeah. the other Kirby games, which, uh, Spoiler alert, is in my fucking break it. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, Milky Way Wishes is the next one. And the basis of this game is, uh, uh, so Pop Star is basically the big ass star that they all live on, I'm guessing. Yeah. I he, don't... He's the, he's the celestial being that's not a god. So, uh, the sun and moon are fighting. Around like always, pop star, and uh, this cat named Marx tells Kirby, "Hey, you gotta go restore uh, the comet clock. You gotta go across like eight or nine different stages and and do that." And uh, basically, I guess the difference uh, in this one is, I know it has a level in there. It's like a side scrolling shooter, which yeah. is. Okay, I don't really think there's a whole lot to was it the back on that, but uh, on the normal Kirby games, Kirby, you know, can copy abilities and stuff like that. I don't think he can copy the abilities on this one, but once he learns a ability, I guess that's the correct one. Once he sucks someone off and well, that's, figures that's out the, their that, attack, that, that's the correct term. Once he sucks someone, once off. he sucks someone's attack, uh, he always has that attack. So yeah. instead of having to give up an ability, uh, or you get to a part where you, uh, uh, a part where you end up having to change abilities, this is more of kind of like a Mega Man style where yeah. you can tally, uh, you can sh cycle. shuffle, yeah, cycle. cycle through back and forth to what you need. So I guess. Uh, Ironically, Milky Way wishes encourages you to suck off as many abilities as you can. Oh yeah. Uh, so there's no wrong time to suck one off. There is you know? never a wrong time uh, to suck one off. So, uh, but other than that, I mean, it, it's a little bit longer game than the others. Uh, but that is essentially it. Is it's fucking Kirby, but you've got unlimited abilities. Yeah. Pretty uh, much. To me, it's the same thing as every other freaking Kirby game. Uh, just a little bit of a twist. Like, I feel like, I guess, let me, this thought I got, let me hammer this out on my break it here okay. for the whole okay. thing. Because, because uh, uh, I kind of got an interesting take on it, I guess, maybe not that interesting. But, uh, and the last game mode out of the eight games, or whatever you want to call it, is the arena. Okay. Uh, yep. I think probably one of the better parts of the whole uh, Kirby Superstar, or the Kirby games. Like I say, I, I played Kirby's Dreamland. Yeah. That's the only Kirby game I've played, even though I own some of them, complete in box and such like that. Uh, my favorite part of the Kirby is... 
I'm not a big fan of the levels. I feel like it's kind of easy, but I appreciate the bosses. Yeah. Uh, the the bosses are fun. I mean, some of them may be easy, but you know that's where I have a little more challenge. That's kind of where I like like Kirby is the bosses. Yeah. So the arena is boss attack mode, and uh, uh, so basically you're playing every boss in the game. You get one life. And uh, you get to pick up. They start the game. They say, "What power up do you want?" Yep. You got one life. You got one and life. You're, one. you're just doing a, uh, just a run. Yeah, uh, kind of like a, a speed run. Yeah, kind of like a roguelike, kind of like a dead yep. cells. You just go through and, and play it. Hope for the best. Uh, so uh, in between those rounds, you got five times that you can uh, boost. You know, gain health. Yeah, and uh, you can get a couple of. Uh, uh, power ups at random. You you know you can do that two times, uh, and after you complete this game, it gives you a sound test. So uh, not that it really mattered that much for me, <laughs> but uh, so basically all the BS, and this is kind of why I like because I feel like some of the stages are very vanilla. And when I say that, the stages look great. The music's great on all these damn Kirby games. Yep. But there's not really much of a challenge. And the part that I like the most is freaking bosses. And then, hey, here you go. Fight all the fucking bosses. Yep. Fight uh, them all. Right now, now, I don't know that it's necessarily the one-all, be-all to Kirby, but I'm getting what I want. Yep. So uh, even though I don't think they're... I guess there is some replayability. I feel like some of these Kirby games don't have replayability, just for me personally. Uh, I did appreciate Arena. I thought Arena was a, a I thought pretty, Arena was a good pretty one strong one. I can't remember how many bosses there are. Uh, I didn't get to the end of them. I think there's eight. I think. But, uh, hey, you know, I, I tell you my favorite parts of the bosses, and you give me a mode where all I'm playing is fucking bosses. Yeah. How can I bitch about that? That's true. Uh... Is there anything you want to say on that one, Josh, on Arena? No, I liked Arena, too. I think it was fun. I think it, like you said, I think it definitely affected how you played, depending on what power-up you chose in the beginning. Oh, yeah. And I think that even, like, some of the bosses just threw out all these Kirby games that we played. Like, I, the very first boss I think I played in the very first game was the tree. The yeah. tree that has a face, and I think it's dropping apples or some shit. Yeah. I can't remember. And I'm like... I don't know who this tree is, but this looks like I've played him in a different game. He seems familiar. Yeah, uh, it, You could probably told his name like King D to D, and I'd be like, oh, that's his name. I know yeah. I've seen this somewhere. Like, There's a familiarity to it, and that's one thing I did like. One with. of the, the, tree pe the tree boss a lot of people have compared it to is the, uh, uh, oh, what are they called? The Kuroko seeds from uh, Legend of Zelda. Oh, you know, like the big tree the, that drops the seeds. Like the big ass, looks like walnuts or whatever. Yeah, yeah. there's people that say it looks like that. Uh, overall, I'm with you. The replayability of this game is not up to my snuff. But again, I do understand that was more geared towards the younger audience. That's why these games weren't that difficult. Well, and I feel like there's, there's a part of this, I guess, that that miss me because if I play these games, I was young at the time these games came out. They just somehow this was a game. Yeah, I go ahead and tell you if my parents could afford to buy me a freaking video game, uh, I would have been more likely to rent one of these games because if they yeah. were going to buy us a game that's 20, 30 bucks, they're going to say, I'm not buying you a game. We don't know what it is. We know you like Mario. We're getting Mario. Yeah. And that's pretty solid. I ain't yeah. complaining about getting Mario. Yeah. Yeah. But if I, I could understand loving Kirby if I would have had it growing up. But for whatever reason, I just, it, it, I, I'm, if it wasn't for me just like trading a Super Nintendo, yeah, uh, or trading and getting a Super Nintendo that had Kirby's, Kirby's Dream Course on it, I wouldn't have ever played a fucking Kirby game. Yeah, I've, I've not even played them on Super Smash Brothers. I didn't even. I played Super Smash Brothers like three times, like all the Super Smash Brothers. Yeah. So that that's another one that's kind of lost on me. So I don't even play them on other games. But it's just, I guess, it speaks on how iconic he is. That I at least know who he is. Yeah, know? that is true. He I is, know he's a loved character. He is uh, one of the star childs for Nintendo. So, as a whole, and we won't take a a whole lot of time here. The game collection as itself, I've really got. Two uh, make it and two break it's on the whole game, Josh. All right, uh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and do some make it. Uh, uh, you can play the game how you want. You know that's one thing. I mean, 
You can pick the level. You can pick the game. It is a family game. You can tear your kids loose over there, and you ain't got to worry about them trying to kill a hooker in Grand Theft Auto. You know, uh, yep. you can just let them play, and uh, that's probably one of the only games you can say where your kids could probably come up to you and say, "Well, Kirby sucks someone off," and you wouldn't even bat an eye. You know yeah, exactly yeah. what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, also positive, it was a couch co-op too. So yes, yeah, so you well some of, I don't think all of them work out. And I don't think your kid's gonna sit there and freak out like some of the Mario stages that. And there are a couple of stages I know in here where it's kind of like Mario, where it kind of pushes you. Sometimes there's a little bit of a freak out where it yeah. panics somebody. Some of the games like or with the clock, but yeah. you know your kid. If your kid's got to go damn feed the dogs and they're playing their video game, they say, oh, I'm in the middle of the game. And while you're playing Kirby, okay, well, pause that damn thing and go feed the dogs. Yeah. Like, it's kind of a leisure experience yeah. for me. Uh, but, you know, uh, I do like that you sick freaks out there can run it and just be like, I want to finish Kirby as quick as fucking possible. Yeah. I'm a speed run motherfucker, which will come into the speed run again. I'm terrified. And so I do appreciate that the game leaves itself. It lends itself to playing it the way you want to play it. Yeah. And uh, on this game specifically, I love that it has a percent on it because, yep. uh, you know, one of the, like going back to some of the N64 games is where, you know, you're playing Super Mario 64 and you're trying to collect the stars. I think it's a hundred stars or whatever. Yeah. And so it's like, it's giving you a goal. I can understand that Thanks you beat all these games and you get to like 92% and you're like, what am I missing? Where like, the fuck is it? You played this game and conquered it like I imagined I would have as a kid. I feel like I wouldn't rest until I 100%ed yeah. everything. Yeah, that, that was the biggest thing about Benjo and Kazooie. That's what got me into 100%ing in a lot of games was that. So, uh, do you have anything you want to put on Make It of this, Josh? The make it, I mean, so we're we're doing this as a whole. Like uh, said, this is as the whole game. The whole game. Honestly, the controls were still decent across every single game. Yeah, and I guess you're right, and we take it for granted because we've said it on every one. Yeah. Uh, the graphics, even on the older ones that have been redone, are good. They're yeah. great. The music's good. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they 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 done it right whenever they done you, this. You are getting, even if you don't care for the game, you got to appreciate there is quality to yeah. the game. Yeah. That's like you can tell that this is a Nintendo yeah, property. That's know. like I know people who despise uh, Mario All Stars just for one game on there, and that's Super Mario Two, arguably one of the better ones. I mean, I ain't gonna say I'm... for that time for, on 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 All Stars itself. I give you two and three. Those were my favorites. I, I, I'd say three is the best, but man, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, Super Who's Mario fired? Super Mario World. Was a fucking banger too. See, oh, now I said on All Stars itself. Yeah, yeah. Now I didn't include yeah. All Stars plus Super Mario but, World. Yeah, it's it's tough. I'm I'm surprised that nobody's made like a fucking reboot of Super Mario Two or Super Mario Two and a Half. Yeah. Or or Super Mario, Mario Twelve or, or whatever. Super Mario World. Just give me and, a full And reset. maybe it's just because they forget what fucking Super Mario they're on because like, damn Super Mario it seems like every other damn six months coming out. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, that would kind of be a fun fact. I, I bet when we get to Super Mario World, uh, I'm going to find the fun fact of how many games <laughs> has Mario? Mario, and how many games has Mario, like how NES Golf yeah. has Mario as the golfer, or how Mario Tennis. is the guy in Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. The, the, so I've got that uh, yeah. that's stuck in my head now. And then also you got Mario uh, Kart, you got uh, baseball, soccer. Yeah. I'm scared to know how many there are. Because, I mean, I think we'd say we're going to start with a stupid number out and we'll be like 100 and there'll be like 26,000 yeah, games. Yeah, because you also got the Olympics, the Mario Olympics. Oh, God. Yep. And he's with Sonic. How the fuck did that happen? Yeah. You know? I also got the Mario RPG games. Still Smash never Brothers. played one of them. Uh, all right, so. Uh, I bet you there's a lot of Kirby games out there, too. I don't, I don't know. Well. Here's two brackets that I have for okay. this. And one of these is a me thing. And this is probably the biggest one. Boy, is this a bad first go at Kirby. Oh, yeah. Because if you would have told me that I played Ger Kirby on NES, and I'm, like, say we were doing a Kirby retrospective where we go and play Kirby start with Kirby number one. I guess you're kind of doing the same thing. I'm getting eight Kirby games, and by God, I'll know more about fucking Kirby <laughs> by the time I finish this. But it's just like, 
it's fucking Kirby Overload. Yeah. Uh, if I played Kirby, the first Kirby, uh, and then I'm like, oh, okay, well, this game's kind of cool, but it, it's an NES game and it's easy, which most make- NES games make you want to slit your wrists. They're so fucking tough. Yep. But I could be, I say, okay, well, oh, the Game Boy game might be a little easier, but I understand yep. Game Boy didn't have as much capability, and I could uh, maybe notice it more subtly playing them standalone that maybe one's a little more difficult or yeah. whatever. But having them all in there together, it was just like, I don't know, man. Like It, all, it was all too easy. It's like, I'm kind of undecided on Kirby, and instead of getting to play them a little more naturally, it's just like, yeah, man, I I tell you what I don't want to play right now is another fucking Kirby I'm tired game. of being a little pink foot that sucks people off. Yes, I've had enough <laughs> sucking of people off. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it, I've got to keep a biased on it because yeah. I'm, I'm fucking burnt out on Kirby. Yeah. I played Kirby. I feel like I never had to play Kirby again. But it's going to fuck with me on the rankings because it's still a good game. It's still a good game. So just for me personally, for this to be my first Kirby experience, fucking sucks too for much, Kirby. Too yes, much. Yeah, too much overload. It exploded. Yep, too exploded. much. Exploded. Too much suckage. Yes. My my thing is on my break it is this is Kirby is good but it does not hold the difficulty of what I like in games now. This was like a very watered down version of Mega Man platforming boss fight because bosses were I mean not bosses but enemies were everywhere, but it was way too easy to defeat them and. And it's interesting you say that is because too, with me not being a Kirby, not playing Kirby, I expect that I'm playing every fucking Kirby game ever made. I didn't know we hadn't made up Kirby games in this. Yeah, and that kind of fucks yeah. with me too. So if I might not be giving it a fair ass shake. No. I would think that at least like like Super Mario All Stars is you got the original mm-hmm. games and then like the lost levels. Uh, I don't know. I know there is original games in here, but I'm like. I know I've got games in there that's not. Yeah. You know? uh, so that that part does mess yeah, with that, that. And with this it being at the end of the life cycle, like one of the last games I think we said it was that was released like in the last push, why would you not have put Kirby's Dream Course in there as well too? Yeah. Because it's like you're just reselling a game. You know, you're at the end yeah, of take, your rope. Take out uh, Kirby's Samurai and Mega Punch and... Put in, like you said, Dream Course, or didn't Kirby have a racing game at one point in time? I don't know that. Uh, I think he did. So I guess as a whole, this is another thing that this is probably more of an insult. The first thing is it's just a bad first go at Kirby. That's a me thing. This is what I kind of fucks with me here is maybe you could have made this instead of calling it Kirby All Stars. Maybe you made it like. Uh, it kind of like a Super Mario World or a Mario Three because that in some of those games it was kind of like a Mario map moving yeah. through the level. I feel like you could have made this whole game and each of these just been a section of the map, like yeah. level four. And I think in Mario Three, level four was the big level. And or you know, uh, or you would. I think I can't remember, but like you know how each level has its theme. Why didn't you make kind of like an eight level Kirby? Like you could have been like. It would have made yeah. a little more sense, like the Samurai one. You could have been like, oh, you've got Kirby on the island. The yeah. Samurai Island yeah. or whatever. But, you know, to me, it was like... you got Kirby on Dino Blade. I feel like instead of just giving me the option like I, that you could have just made this kind of like a big map. Yeah. And I love the percent that they put on there. And I felt like if you would have just put this all as one huge game and each section had its own gameplay kind of like yeah. this. And even the arena could have been like the Mega Man games and stuff at the end where you got to battle through all them motherfuckers yeah. throughout a stage. I just feel like that, to me, that might have made more sense. But uh, And it was just because some of these games are so short too. And some of them weren't really that hard. I just felt like... These could have all been a level. The, the, the Kirby Samurai and the Kirby Punch-Out could have been a load screen mini game. Which, at the end of the day, too, I guess it may have just been, I guess, to dumb it down to the finest for me personally. It may have just been too much fucking Kirby. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but that's me. I but, get it. I, I do, too, because I was about kirby out as well because a lot Kirby, again. It would be hard. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Too much. It, too easy. And, and, you know, we may, and, and I've got fond memories of Super Mario World and Super Mario All-Stars. Might be the same damn thing with Super Mario. I doubt yeah, it. Yeah. But, you know, hey, we're we're older. You put all these multi-carts in here. 
uh, you know, maybe we're fucking done with Super Mario Brothers by the end of it, too. I'm just curious if I remember all the little secrets in all the Mario games. I bet you probably remember more than you think. I do know that. And I'm going to go ahead and just go on a wild guess, and I say, I bet, because I just remember it vividly. That was my first experience with the... Well, um, we had an Atari, but I didn't really take none of that shit serious other than Asteroids. Uh, still to this day, <laughs> love me any game that is remotely Asteroid-based. There is, I'll tell you this, probably one of my fucking favorite games ever is an old fucking Macintosh PC game called Maelstrom, and it is basically an Apple knockoff of Asteroid. Asteroids, and it is fucking fire. There, the two Apple computers I have in there that I don't use is because I got Maelstrom on one. I've got one ran through emulation on there, and that's the only reason I have that fucking computer. Have you even played it yet? Absolutely, I have. <laughs> uh, it is a talking to sucking shit off. It will suck the time out of the fucking day. Like, yeah. It's one of those where you're like, hey, this is like a, literally an eight minute game and I'll be done, but it's you're going against your high score. Yeah, going you gotta to keep going. Of, the next thing you know, it's like fucking two o'clock in the morning and your wife's left you and the damn dogs are shit in the floor. <laughs> like, you don't know what's happened in your you life. You have an eight in days. Yes, <laughs> yes. You come out look like goddamn caveman from Geico, you know. <laughs> But anyway, so uh, I feel like, uh, you know, a That's lot of sweet. fucking Kirby. Yeah, a lot, lot of Kirby. Uh, so, with all this being said, Josh, I've got uh, fun facts, which I think are pretty solid fun facts. Uh, uh, well, we, we already talked about the fun facts. I'm sorry, uh, because we talked about uh, Kirby's name. I forgot we did fun facts last week. Yeah. Because my favorite fun fact maybe that we've had on the show is how Kirby was going to be originally called Popopo. Yeah, and he got... But he got changed after the lawyer, John Kirby, who won the lawsuit against Universal for the name of Donkey Kong. Yeah. And uh, so he got a free copy. uh, He he got a free copy of Kirby's Adventure. And he also gets a yacht. And they gave him a $30,000 sailboat named Donkey Kong and exclusive rights to name any of his sailboats Donkey Kong. Yeah. So I forgot that we have yeah. did that. So what we're going to have is another fun fact about Kirby. Kirby's only like three inches tall. Okay. Well, we've got reviews. I feel like it's probably the next thing we need to yeah. do. Yeah. Uh, speed runs are fucking nuts. Yeah, I know. I figured. And then we got price charting, which is probably fucking nuts. So it'll probably take us thirty minutes to cover that, which will put us about at our hour, just because of uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm entertained. I'm entertained. <laughs> Are you by entertained this. by the speed runs? Yes, because there's a lot. Yeah, and there's like nine people actively like uploading shit on there. I just checked right now, <laughs> and so like you know, this is definitely a beloved game. And yeah. then we got to rank these bitches. Uh, so the reviews. One of the four reviewers reviewers from Electronics Gamely Month Gaming Monthly applauded the large amount of content, simultaneous two player mode. You are right with that couch co-op being the uh, the duplicate or whatever, yeah. and you playing that that is solid. I completely forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, I didn't get to do it. No, but I, I, bet, I bet you that would be amazing. Uh, they applauded a large amount of content, simultaneous two-player graphics, and Kirby's power-absorbing ability. Uh, Captain Cameron, uh, that's what they said. Captain Cameron, a game pro, gave it a perfect 5 out of 5 in sound control and fun factor and a 4 out of 5 in graphics. And, you know, the, the fun factor, you know, that, I, I, that review, these people are, if they were, this is damn 20, 30 damn years ago. Yeah, so I'm not, I get it. I feel like I that's probably yeah. accurate. Yeah. Uh, that he also comm- commented the perfect execution, execution of very controls. Uh, leads to simple but charming fun. And I think that's... I get that. uh, They did a review of the virtual console Nintendo Life did. And they... uh, So basically when it was on Wii and Wii U and you could buy it, they praised it It as an impressive uh, musical score and colorful visuals. I feel like that's accurate. Uh, Accolades. uh, Electronic Gaming Monthly named Kirby Superstar runner-up for side-scrolling game of the year. Behind Guardian Heroes, which I don't even know, but uh, Games of Radar ranked it at number nineteen in their best Super Nintendo games of all time. Uh, Twenty eighteen Complex listed Kirby Superstar as fifty one in their best of all time, and so IGN what? also I'm about to say IGN's theirs. coming in. IGN praised it as a game, calling it an incredible game, having an incredible value, and having an incredible value. Uh, I guessing that they're not talking about the price. It's probably, or maybe they are. Uh, I ain't giving you could no be hints bo- on could that. Could be both. Uh, I feel like it's an incredible value just of the gameplay that yeah. you get. Uh, do you? 
I guess that brings us into it is another one of our top yeah. 100. I've not got my list here. This is probably like the fifth or sixth top 100 game. Yeah. And this is tough for me because I don't know that I have this as a top 100 game, but I don't know what can beat it. Yeah. That's the thing. Is yeah. It, yeah, I've, I've lost it. I've got one page of it here, but I don't know where the other one is. I have 53 to 100. Just letting you know. Oh, wait, don't look. Oh, don't, 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 don't look. Oh no, you're not. You got the wrong one. I got the page here. I got. The page. I must. I had the bottom half, and I didn't see it on there. I feel like it's like a treasure map, and like you don't <laughs> trust the other person, so you keep your. Yeah, app. that's the one, dude. God damn, what is that? Uh, that damn Uncharted movie. It's like that. You, you can't trust the motherfucker. Uh, okay, so here's the games that we've played on that top 100 list. Uh, Sunset Riders, Fatal Fury 2. The hidden gem of Sunset Riders. <laughs> Fatal Fury 2, which you still think we played Fatal Fury 1. I do. Uh, maybe when we get Fatal Fury 1, I'll play uh, Fatal Fury 2. And I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, Axelay was number 55. Mega Man X2 is at 31 somehow. Oh, uh, yeah. Star Fox is at number nine. So this is one that I feel like I give it a strong rating, and I think there's a lot of games better to, than this, but I don't know what they are. So maybe that's how Kirby hangs around here. Yeah. Because I knew when I played this, it's like there's no way that this has to be in the top 100. It has to be. But to me, it's it's a tough rank. So uh, what if... Let me ask you this. Here's some games that are on the... That are ranked behind it. You tell me that you agree. Ranked behind yes. it. Yes. Do you think Kirby Superstar is better than Zombie Ate My Neighbors? Never played it. Oh, you're going to love that game. It's weird. It's tough. But I... Look, I, if it is as hard as Super Ghouls and Ghosts... It's, it's a different type of game. Like, there, there is a lot of people that love Zombie Ate My Neighbors, and I feel like if this is one of your favorite games, you never really fucking played it because it's like, I played hours of Zombies Ate My Neighbors, and I got shit wrecked every fucking time. Yeah. And if you want to talk about a casual game that you don't freak out, it is not Zombies Ate My that, Neighbors. You same. got goddamn werewolves, you got Jason fucking hedge clipper dudes. Like, <laughs> it's a very... Anxiety driven yeah. game. Let's say I've, I play Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and that is a fucking hard All fucking right. game. Super Bomberman is ranked behind Kirby. I love Super Bomberman. I've I did too. It. Yoshi's Cookie never played it. Uh, oh my god, you fucking called it. Behind it is Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, King yep. Griffey Jr.'s winning run. I'd probably rather play King Griffey Jr. than this. Uh, Breath of Fire, Bust a Move. So the games that are ranked a bit ahead of it is Harvest Moon. I've never played Harvest Moon. I've played Harvest Moon. Gradius 3. It's okay. Uh, uh, Demon's Crest, Breath of Fire, Ogre Battle, Earthworm Jim 2. It's it's kind of in a strange spot. It seems like it's almost in the middle. Do you want to take just a rough guess? We won't spend a whole lot of time. If you want to say where is this going to be on a top 100 list. I'll say right around the 30 mark. Let me see that. We played 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... This will be the sixth game, unless I've forgotten to mark one on here. And uh, Kirby Superstar comes in at rank number 47. 47? Okay. That, which, which, like I say, it's... It's, it's in the middle. It's, it's tough, because I don't know. I, to me, it's not number 47. I don't know what game... It, it's a bad first go for Kirby for me. Yeah. At the same time, uh, you know, I know automatically where I'm going to rank it in this season... But I feel like yeah, I, do too. I feel like it's probably because a professional basketball player showed up at the park, and I ain't saying he's the goat, the best basketball player of all time, but it's definitely better than everybody else at the park. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's kind of hard to say. I, I don't know. I'll just leave that as it is. Uh, so speed runs and price charting. What do you want first, Josh? With those random fucking speed runs out there that you said just got updated. Well, I'm trying to see the last one. That, so they do this as the full game. Okay. Beating it any percent and beating it 100%. Okay. So the rules on any percent is it's, they start when you select a file. So when you literally pick your one of three files or whatever, the timing ends on the final hit on marks. Uh, use of a second controller is not allowed, so you cannot have if somebody. You can't with have you. couch co-op. Uh, they've got three different emulators that are banned. 
I'm going to guess because they may have a speed option or something. Yeah. You can maybe uh, make it a little what they call overclock it or whatever. Yeah. If you're running on a flash cart, you got to specify. So that's one thing I like is at least they, they put the rules there uh -huh. on speedrun.com. Uh, not a sponsor, but would be <laughs> a fucking great sponsor. Not that they would claim our Yeah, ass. yeah. Uh, because we are like the most non-speedrun people. Oh, fuck no. But I'm so entertained by these sick Look, freaks. I will say this. I am proud about one game that I could partially speedrun. What's that? Mario 3. Okay. Without looking, I want to do a video of you speedrunning Mario 3. And then getting so excited because I can't get... I'm probably not faster than you. And then live on the air going to speedrun.com and, and seeing see how it. bad you fucking suck oh, compared 100%, to them. I'm gonna fucking suck 100% <laughs> so uh, That's, I, I said partial speedrun so that was any percent on 100% it is the same thing except you've got to hit 100% on your on the on, on the your ending thing. fall so uh, we're gonna go any percent and uh, dear lord there's a lot of people <laughs> So I'm just looking down the list, and it shows the first page is one of 100 of 118 runs. Dear Jesus. I'm going to see when the last entry was. <laughs> well, that one is all wrote in Japanese. Well, you can't do that one. All right, so there's a lot of people just doing this as a celebration, and they're like, hey, we know we suck, but we're just putting our hat in the ring, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, oh, well. Uh, ironically, I've got to call out number 65. His name is Broge, Man, B-R-O-E-D-G-E-M-A-N. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll say, hey, this is this speed run was done 12 years ago, three years ago, seven months ago. This one says never. <laughs> just says fucking never. He, he's never done it. He, so, he's just uh, in there. I don't know what the hell that is. It looks like the video uh, has been unuploaded. Uh, oh shit! I didn't kick myself off of it. Give me a second. He he just joined the speedrun community and says, "Hey, never done this one." Well, that never was several years ago. So, uh, never was. Well, it would have had to have been several years ago. Anyways, it looks like there's a few that was done six months ago, but the record has been there for a year. That We'll just go with the top five. Okay. Not to slot everybody else, but the top four, just so you know, are Japan. The fourth one is American. Oh, look at us. The next in. two are Japan, American, Japan, American. And then there is somebody, I know that flag, that is Chile. Yeah. Chile. So uh, the... the Fifth, the American that has uh, came in, the that is from New York City, has been uploaded three months ago. That is the soonest action on okay. it. The, uh, the four ahead of him have been one year, one year, two years, two years. Okay. Uh, there's a couple OGs in the top ten that's been like five years to seven years ago. So, you know, these motherfuckers are uh, bosses. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the number five guy, Nippo, from New York. Uh, oh, shit. That's 100%. I guess we're going to do 100% since I've got it pulled up. Nippo, 100%ing this. What would you imagine Dude, the time I, frame is? 100%ing. Because the way I would think 100%ing is you'd have to collect all the food and gourmet dash. Or I don't think I think you just got to beat Gourmet Dash, but I think the one that really stands out to me is that kind of uh, the damn cave crawler. Yeah, uh, that one's got to be tough because you got to get sixty fucking. I think you just got to beat the game. You got to go through the game. You got to beat it. I didn't get a hundred percent, so I don't I necessarily know. But I think that's going to be the kick in the ass. So I don't think you're really going to have to replay them as long as you beat them. I think that's where you're getting your percentage at. Okay. So, somebody had literally just shit whipped this thing in 100%. So, I was going to guess like 45 minutes, but I know that's way too high. Uh, the difference between first and fifth on 100% is basically five minutes. Yeah. So, this is some pretty cutthroat. There's 118 entries. Yeah. Most of the time when I pull it up, you might have eight entries. No. If it's a popular game, 20 entries. We got 118 yeah. entries. Yeah. Uh, 
This is the game to speed Just run. Just 100, well, I'm, I'm sorry. On 100%, there's 62 entries. There's 118 on the full thing. Uh, the number 62nd, I'm going to shout out Rocks from Pennsylvania, USA, seven years ago. He, he or she is the last place person. They did it in three hours and 41 minutes. Yeah! So that's last place, and that's 62. Yeah. Number five. I'm going to throw it out here to you. One hour, nine minutes, and 40 seconds. Okay. Which I feel like is super quick. Uh, from Japan, uh, R-I-S-U-O underscore T-E-T. R- Rizuo Tet. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher every one of these fucking Japanese <laughs> names. Uh, Rizuo Tet son. Uh, one hour, nine minutes, six seconds. He was 34 seconds quicker. Z Z Z H number zero N K I Zahonke. <laughs> I feel like that's what it's got to be. Coming in with a bronze medal one year ago, or I'm sorry, two years ago. Uh, one hour, seven minutes, forty four seconds. W A M I M I D X. Wamimi or Wamim. Yeah, it's Wamimi D X. Uh, they did it number two. One, one year ago, one hour, five minutes, 20 seconds. And Y-O-T-T-A, which I feel like is the Japanese spelling of Yoda. It's Yoda. Yoda. Uh, one hour, four minutes, 56 seconds. So that's 100% shit, Josh. Okay. Any percent. So you know what was what, what I say, one hour, four minutes, just to beat the game. Just to go through every level and not 100%, not to collect. I got, there's no way you could do... Gourmet Dash and collect, collect all, it all. Yeah. So I'm not going to say because this is way quicker. Yeah. So there must just be more to the game, I guess, of the levels. Uh, I got to tell you this the hundred, the hundredth person out of 118 runs did it in one hour, nine minutes. Okay. So there's 99 better than that. And we're going to pick up at the top five. Uh, well, we'll pick up in top six because number six is Nippo, who is the fifth place in the 100%. Uh, you even want to take a guess or you just want me to rattle off ridiculous times to you? <sighs> Nippo is number six. That is the only one out of the top six that is not Japanese. And Yada is number one. Yada is the fucking goat of Kirby, I guess. I, prove, him, prove him wrong, you know? Cause that's, yeah, I, uh, I, I said just by the... Any percent completion time versus the hundred percent completion time on the last person that you told me, who came in last, thirty five. You're, you're fucking close. Yeah. Just leave it at thirty five. Nippo did it at sixth place in thirty four minutes and twenty seconds. Okay. The whole fucking game. Okay. Just beating, just getting through it. Uh, Moyashi, of course, these are all Japanese. Is number five at thirty four minutes fourteen seconds. At thirty four minutes thirteen seconds is N E N B U T S U three three three, and then Butsu three three three. At thirty three minutes fifty five seconds is Yama U, and while Mimi D X came in at number two eleven months ago with thirty three minutes and twenty seven seconds, and a fucking boss ass Yada came in here fucking 26 seconds quicker and did it in 33 minutes and one second. Damn. Just beat the fucking game. That, I don't know why. That where's just, our, where's our person Lay Hulk at in this? I, I don't know. Them, I, I feel like the Japanese own Kirby. Oh, like yeah. Like, they literally own Kirby yeah. and they own the, the speed run to it. Uh, let me pull it up because I did not have my price charting. Here's the next question. So just keep this in mind, Josh. I, I'm working off memory from the last episode. Yeah. But uh, the uh, it was released. It was some of the last release games. Yeah. So a lot of times, short release, early release, and, and late release, release. Re, you know, in a combination of that. Yeah. Uh, small release uh, that contributes to some crazy ass numbers. Yeah. Right. Uh, with all that being said, uh, I'm terrified. Um, <laughs> you're already chuckling. <laughs> Superstar. Uh, 
why do you think a loose copy of this? Or I can tell you if you pick a random year that is from 2015 or 2007 to 2015, I will tell you what the price of it is. If that, if you, let me if, get my paper. Let me get my math. Okay. So, Kirby Superstar. Eight games in one. That's the thing. Eight games in one. Are you gonna denote it? You're gonna try to price each game. I'm, th I'm thinking it. Oh, no. I'm thinking it. Okay. Let's see here. Give me. You give me a year, and I'll break out a little bit more information for you. 2007 to 2015. Give me 2012. In 2012, in January of 2012, a loose cart went for $23.16. The lowest that I show it tracking, and I could be wrong because I'm not damn squint my fucking eyes. Yeah. If this isn't the lowest, it's pretty close, so don't fuck you if you go there and say, no, -uh, in November of that year, it was yeah. $1 cheaper. Uh, in November of 2010... It sold for eighteen seventy five, and I think that is the lowest that it ever sold. And that's in 20, and, 2010. And, yes. And when I say that's the lowest it sold, that's the graph shows me from 2007 up. So I'm not going any farther back than 2007 because I'm not clicking the buttons no more. Yeah. So the lowest it's ever been is eighteen seventy five. And I told you it was about twenty three dollars in twenty twelve. So you, you put a fucking pandemic in there, and then you put yep, the yep, that, 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 that's what I'm the doing. internet allowed people to breed their speed runs, their obsessions, all their this dirty is, vices. This is also a late release as well. Got to add that in there. But it's a late release. But I would feel like with it being Kirby, it's probably not like a. Super okay. exclusive release. Yep. Also going American in there. That's Kirby, the pink little foot that likes to suck off people's powers. Okay. So let's add the pandemic. Let's do speed run. Add that. Okay. I'm going to say that that 2316 now is going to be roughly $76.24. The highest that it ever was was in July of 2001. Okay. In 2001? 21. 21. I'm guessing we're probably, without looking it up, we're probably talking pandemic. Yeah. How much was it then? I told you my guess. Okay. The highest that I show it tracking was $69.50. Okay. Okay. And that was in, that was three years ago, yeah. roughly. I in three years, inflation and all that, I was. So your original guess was 76. So you get. 76.24. So give me, give me, so you know that you're a little high on that. Yeah. So throw me another number out. Okay. And ironically, it shows that it sells one time a day and it is $1.98 more now than it was from their tracking. Okay. I would probably drop it down to sixty-two. A manual sells for fourteen dollars and fifty cents. I would say I drop it down to sixty-two fourteen. Fifty-nine ninety-seven. Okay. A complete copy. Uh, you know, I'm just gonna tell you. Of course, this doesn't matter because you would think that if you had access to these, you could make a whole living out of buying boxes and buying manuals and games buying and putting them together and sell them as complete. But the math, you think the math would fucking work out, but it never does. Yeah. Uh, a uh, manual sells for $14.50, Josh. Okay. Put this into the equation. I feel like when you're, I'm going to say put it into the computer. Yep. It's a piece of fucking paper. And I don't know that Josh knows what the fucking equation is. <laughs> I feel like he's making it up every week. <laughs> I'm making it up probably, as I go, man. Uh, the box only price is $95. God, fuck. And I, if you want me to really fuck with you, I give you a graded price. Just because I know we always, we don't really figure that in. Yeah. And I don't think there's any equation on a graded. A graded one, uh, they sell one per year at roughly $1,657. Oh, fuck. Okay, hang on. Hold up. So with all that, the unnecessary so, okay. information to so, fuck with you. So loose, you said was 60. 50, yeah, call it 60 bucks. $60. Enough. 
Okay, and then a fucking graded is sixteen hundred and fifty dollars. A box is a ninety five and a manual is fourteen fifty. So just by looking at it you would say, Hey, a box only, a manual, and a loose price would roughly be I don't know, you're probably saying one hundred and seventy five dollars. Is that accurate, Josh? Is that how you feel? Do you think it's higher? Do you think it's lower? I think it's higher. I think it's a lot higher. I'm going to say that... This is so much more fun when I know the numbers. And yeah. I can just drink beer and watch you try to calculate Yeah, this. because if you add all that up, you're roughly at... Let's see here. Um, I can't do math right. The last complete inbox one, just so you know. Uh, roughly 169 is how much that would be. Without going clicking on the link to look at condition, there's two of them sold this month. One sold complete in box on nine five, and one sold on nine nine. Okay. So one sold ten days ago, and one sold about fourteen days ago. Let's see here. I'm gonna add the uh, COVID coefficient to this. COVID coefficient. Okay. Add the suck suck you off special. Nope, nope, not suck you off special. Speed run special. Okay, speed run. Okay. And then. With a little asterisk underneath that, which is going to make it a little, it's going to be a percentage ad, is uh, Sick Fuck Collectors. It just okay. cracks me up because you worked so hard on this, and I'm ready to <laughs> shit all over you, brother. So, I'm going to say that with just the price that I added up, the 169 if, if the math worked, I'm going to say that it's going to be roughly about 731. Uh, okay, I'm going to fuck with you a little bit, Josh. So you're saying a complete inbox is 731. Yeah, because the math never works out. Like, technically, it should equal out to be 169, but I know that's absolutely fucking wrong. Do you want me to tell you what the complete price is? Yes. The complete price is one hundred and sixty nine dollars and five cents. What? It is one sixty nine and a nickel at one sale per week of a complete inbox. Now, with that being said, it is very volatile because with that, and I know there's a lot to this. So going back until uh, June, July, July, there was a complete one, one ninety nine. In August, there was one with the it said complete with inserts and posters sold for two thirty nine. Uh, complete 258. There's one complete sold for 133, one complete for 180. So, I think probably, and I guess this is on all the games that we're looking at, yeah, is you're probably going to run into this as these are old ass games. The difference between a 133 and a 258 probably isn't that it's complete in box, it's probably going to be that it's beat the fuck out of it, yeah, because that's, that's the, what happened to all these games, yeah. So, <laughs> It 100% right. depends on how rough that game is. If it was in a house full of smokers and if that cart's turned yellow and stuff like All that. All right, so a new one. I have uh, a fucking no idea. The number you gave me, what was that number, 731? Yeah. It, it is higher than, a, than what a new one than costs. what a new one is? So you're somewhere between 169 and $730. 515 575 Two okay. sales per year. So, I don't know that I'm surprised that this game is this expensive, or I'm not. I mean, at, at $60, that's not too bad on a loose cart if you love fucking Kirby yeah. on a late-release game that is really a first party. At the end of the day, Josh, and I don't know the answer to this. And it's fucking weird that the math of buying a manual plus a box plus a loot equals out to be exactly the cost minus a nickel. I'm wondering on this, and, and this is me talking complete bullshit, like... Any other thing that I say. Well, on my map. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, it's, this is a Nintendo, you know, this is a first party game. Yep. Uh, what we would call first party game. Uh, I would imagine that production numbers ain't an issue. You've got the money to yeah, just hammer yeah, these you, things you, out. You, you but have. it was so late in the cycle, I feel like this is, uh, you know, this is one of the, the later run games. Yeah. It's just like, I feel like you've probably, this came out. And there's probably plenty of copies of it. I, I bet there's probably more new copies of this, not just because it wasn't bought, but just I, I just feel like they produce this a lot. And for it to still hold that price, it just I don't know. I can't wrap my head around it. Uh, at the end of the day, Josh, a loose cart for sixty bucks of this 
or you take, and we're going to say it's a nice car. This ain't a, a the smoker's car. Yeah. The label looks good. You got this 60 bucks or $30 cash. What are you buying, Josh? Taking the 30 I See, think I would, just because of the simple fact. Yeah, it's a fun game. It's not a hard game. It'd be something for my kids to play. Well, and there's but they're also tired of my bullshit anyways about me me uh, me having them try to play these old fucking games. So I've not pulled up what I've got as far as the number of games I own for Super Nintendo. Uh, I know it's over a hundred, and you know maybe let's just say it's one eighty hypothetically. Yeah. I've never ran into this game. Now, yeah. I'm not going to say that I never owned it way back when and stuff, but like today, like a lot of times like you get on Facebook Marketplace, it's Super Nintendo with yeah. 12 games for X amount. This is never one of the games. Yeah, no. And, and that's the one thing. That I've never seen it at pawn way. shops. I've never seen it on like yard sales, estate sales, or anything along those lines. I feel like I'm going to shit on Kirby more than anybody. But and you're keeping that card. I think I'm keeping the card. Well, that's because you got the collector mentality. That, and that's, as long that, as it's a good card. That, if, that's the sick collector fuck. If you're giving me $30 and I've got a label that's not pristine, or there's a little discoloration, or if the sticker's peeling up a little bit, yeah. I'd sell it in a heartbeat. But if it's a good sticker on the cart, I would 100% keep this yeah. cart. And I don't think that I'm a big Kirby fan. So I feel like that's that's me I, like, coming see, out of my show. I'm not a Kirby fan. I, I enjoy the games whenever I was younger, but I don't now because I think they're way too easy. All right, so we're going to come down here, Josh. This is our first two-part episode. Yep. Which we don't really... Our model isn't necessarily two-part episodes. But... Uh, just to do its justice, and and I don't think that we did any deep dive on it by any means, but to give each game, a, you know, the respect that we try, that you know, we we've, we've dragged this out into two hours, and we could probably go another twenty minutes, but we'll keep it going. Uh, let's rank this bitch. Yes, yes, Satan. Let's yeah. rank this. <laughs> so, the games that we had before. Uh, Captain Com- season six. So it's it's on Mount Rushmore because yep. this is our third game. Yep. And you've got, we both got Captain Commando as number one. Yep. And we've got the Artie adventures Lot- of Artie Lotfoot. Yep. Artie Lotfoot. Uh, which is ironically, uh, you know, I, I forget these numbers. I could probably, I could tell you which games are expensive. I feel like, but I couldn't tell you the numbers. Yeah. So, like, Captain Commando and Artie Lotfoot. And then Kirby, I consider these all kind of expensive fucking yeah. games here. Yeah, I agree so, with that. So uh, I think I'm going to take that in my prediction for the next game. But with all this being said, uh, Captain Commando is your number one. Artie Lightfoot's your number two. I don't think there's a huge surprise. Where are you going to put Kirby's uh, uh, superstar or Kirby's shit? I didn't have to sit here and talk about it. And I forget <laughs> the whole fucking name. Kirby Superstar, eight games in one. Yeah. Where are you putting it, brother? Honestly, I'm probably going to put it at number two. Really? Ugh. Yeah. You're saying Captain Commando is better than Kirby. I had more fun out of Captain Commando. And, and see, this is where the... the like, I, I, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put it up there at number one just because it's Kirby. I'm putting it up there because I enjoyed this game a little bit less than Captain Commando. I feel like if you had to play this game way back when... Uh, like when they came out, this would be by far a better game. Yeah. And I understand, and I try not just to say, hey, this game, I can't imagine this is going to be my number 47. Yeah. I do not believe it can be there. And I feel, once again, I feel like it's tough for it to be a top 100 game, but I don't know what game is going to beat it. But I'm going to give it the tip of the hat until Kirby Superstar is number one. And the main reason... That is because one of the main reasons I didn't care for the Kirby. Uh, Kirby Superstar, I feel like, is a slow-moving game. Yep. And Captain Commando, even though I probably did enjoy playing Captain Commando more, still felt like a slow game as well. So, I guess just production value, all of it together. Uh, I guess when I had to say one of the biggest knockoffs is if you gave me too much of the person in the game. That, I don't know. I'm going to give it... T- I don't feel great about it. But I'm going to say Kirby Superstar's number one Captain Commando, Artie Lot, but definitely better than Artie Lot. Oh, yeah. 100% is better than uh, Artie Lot, but no matter what. So, you're saying Captain Commando is better. Yeah. I'm going to say Kirby Superstar is better. Fair enough. Uh, well, I, said, I can't argue with you. I mean, like I said, I'm... I just got more enjoyment out of Captain Commando than I did Kirby. So, 
All this coming in. We're coming in on episode 64. It'll be our... 65th episode. I don't know what number it is. It's, it's been a few. Um, no, I mean, technically this is 64 that we're recording, but it's 63. Are you putting the season re-ranks in? No, I'm not putting season re-ranks Because that's it. we got five of those. Yeah, so, I'm not putting yeah, season... We're, we're getting to Final Fantasy math at yeah, this point. No, you know, no, you don't not, know. I'm not doing that, but I'm just saying, as far as regular episodes okay. go, unless we count this one as literally... 63B. Just to put in there, our, ep- our seasons are 10 episodes, except for first season. It's 20 episodes. Yeah. So the only consistent thing is it's inconsistent. Yep. But by God, pending shit that happens in life, the one thing that isn't inconsistent is we at least try to get uploaded every fucking Sunday. Yeah. Sometimes I get busy, and it is Sunday evening, but I try Sunday between 6 and 7 in the morning. Yep. Eastern. EST. With all this being said... I'm going to go with the correlation after we talked it out. Is I'm going with price. You going to think that it's going to be a high price again? Uh, so Kirby Superstar was sixty dollars. Uh, Artie Lightfoot, I felt like was like a hundred and forty. I think so. It was it was way up there. I think Captain Commando was way up there too. Uh, Artie Lightfoot is a hundred and seventy eight dollars. Yeah. Uh, and Captain Commando, I think, was like almost. Was it seventy? Uh, Captain Commando is one seventy nine. One seventy nine. So we're yeah. talking in the hundred and eighty dollar range. So let me do this. I know which game specifically because I think it is that. Oh, you you gonna go to a game that is not exactly a hundred and eighty dollar? <laughs> hang on, hang on. I know which game I'm gonna call. Okay. That I'm gonna give. Three different games that I think is roughly in this price range. Okay. I'm going to say the correlation of this season is it's going to be expensive fucking games. Yep. I say that we're probably going to get a $3 game. I was going to say, my correlation is that we're going to get a dirt cheap fucking game. I'm going to call three different games, two of them being super expensive and one of them being super fucking cheap. My prediction is about a $200 game. Okay. I gotta go. I don't know if Super is in the name, but I'm gonna go with our top three. Okay. Which is you know space shooter. Yep. I'm gonna go with. Let me top in. See, spoiler alert. This one because the price on this one, I never really figure it out. It's gonna be a, a banger. Uh, I'm gonna go with a game that tips the chart at. That's a homebrew at two hundred and thirteen dollars. Ooh, and this is going to be arguably what people say is their number one game that I feel like I will shit all over <laughs> because I don't ever really remember playing it more than ten minutes, but I own it and I never knew I owned it. I'm going to say the second prediction will be Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger is a good one, and just to bug the system. I'm going to predict a super cheap sports game. And I got the one in my mind that I want. And it's a garbage ass game that I've played for fucking hours. Oh, God. And the price of this one, a loose price, is $6.11. Okay. It is a Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball. So I. Wait, what? Yes. Bill Lambeer's Combat Basketball. He was a fucking Laker player back in the day. Combat? Yes, it's weird. It's like fucking. Is it like an HL blitz? No, it's like futuristic, like fucking cyborg shit. It's it's weird. It's bad. Okay. It's bad. Okay. It was never fun before, but you kind of suck when you're playing two player. At least you just both sucked equally. So I'm gonna say super R, or our top three. Our top Chrono, three. Tr- Chrono Trigger or Bill Lambeer. Expensive, expensive, fucking garbage ass game. Okay. Uh, give me a prediction, Josh. I don't know what you think your correlation is here. I feel like price is the obvious. Maybe it's kind of, we've really got two first party-ish games. I mean, Captain Commando is not the, a Nintendo property, but it's Capcom. It is the begin- It is Capcom, because that's where they got their name from. So you've got well-known yeah. uh, producers. I can't remember what Artie Lightfoot was. I want to say I, I want to say that it's going to be top-tier producers. Okay, so we're going to get, like I would a, imagine top tier, we're going to be talking Capcom, Nintendo, Konami. Rare. Uh, rare. Uh, shit, we're well, going to be some of the others. Maybe well, Acclaim or something. Uh, uh, that, that's probably a different tier. I was say Square Enix. Oh, you're right, you're right. Uh, fr- uh, whatever From Software was originally, uh, what was that? Uh, uh, 
God damn it, hang on. What software? From software. Let's see here. Were they? No, they weren't from software. They were something else. From software. Excuse me. You're right. Squaresoft. Squaresoft. That's you it. You had Squaresoft, and then you had uh, Enix. And yeah. That's where Square Enix came from. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I feel like okay. I'm 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 with you. I'm, I'm googling here too. Uh, your big four is going to be your Super Nite Nintendo, Capcom, Konami, SquareSoft. Uh, you know, by, we'll throw in like you know. I'm I'll gonna throw you. in Rare. We'll see if if it came up Rare. I agree with you. Uh, uh, so you're saying we're going to get something high developed? High developed. Is that where you're leaving it, or are you going more specific? No, I, I mean I want a Rare game. Okay. So I could say Donkey Kong. Okay. Any of them. Right. I gotta but I, I want a, is Banjo Kazooie. That's a rare game too. It's not, or is it at Conkers or something? It, they, they are, but they are not on Super Nintendo. They came out for the oh, sixty four. Right. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Conkers was you. You're right. I, Nintendo sixty four. I'm seeing the cartridge in my head now. Yep, I had it. Not a not a game that you should ever buy a uh, twelve year old kid. No, probably not. Uh, Trying to look at what rare Super Nintendo games. I know Donkey Kong. Let's see here. Yeah, never mind. It keeps bringing up rares, and I'm not going. Past yeah, the I know. First that, that's why I'm, I'm so, trying to. Okay. So SNES you, Rare Company. I say we well, got the big four there, plus a couple. Uh, we'll say it's a top five uh, or six uh, uh, development companies. So. Uh, I think you're going to eliminate your Vic Toka, your USA Gold, your Game Tech, all yeah. that stuff, obviously. So, you know what? I hope you're right. Because that typically will say that we are going to play a better game. Let's see here. Hang on. Oh, found I found something. Oh, no. God. No. Cool. Why, why don't you list old games? It just says Donkey Kong Country, Banjo-Kazooie, Conkers, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, Diddy Kong Racing, Killer, Killer Instinct. You know, I'm not a fighter, dude. You know, I'm not a fighter. I know, dude. but Killer Instinct. I've played it, and I will tell you, I completely fucking suck at it. And then... Battle Toads. Maybe we do a, an episode where we just do franchises of fighter franchises, which to me would literally be your Marvel vs. Capcom, Mortal your Kombat. Mortal Kombat, and Super Nintendo from somebody who absolutely fucking hates fighters. <laughs> but, I'm all anyways. for it, dude. I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I love a stage fighter. Alright, so we're gonna wrap up this week. We're gonna do a draw for next week. I'm saying our top three, Chrono Trigger, or Bill Lambert's Combat Basketball. Price it's, is your overall sub goal on that one. Yes, and the trending is it's going to be an expensive game, but just to buck the trend, Bill Lambert, and I'm kind of hoping it's Bill Lambert because I've, <laughs> I've owned this game. I've, I've probably played this game more than I've played 500 other Super Nintendo games just because we got fucking stuck with it. We begged for it at a yard sale and we got stuck with it. So oh, it God, that's even And worse. I would bet that I could kick the shit out of you on this fucking <laughs> game, too, just because I, I had nothing else to play, you know. So, uh, and Josh says we're going to get a highly developed, uh, we'll say top five or six producer on yeah. the system. So, so part on that would be a Donkey Kong genre. Okay, fair enough. Just because you limit it down to three, Donkey Kong, I think, on Super Nintendo had, what, four games? Uh, I think you had three Donkey or... Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. Yeah, so just three? Okay. So, uh, no offense to Kirby, I'm Kirby Doubt. I'm sure you answer Kirby Doubt in two weeks. It's not going to be fucking Kirby unless it's Kirby Dream Course. Yeah. But, uh, well, I think there might have been three Kirby games on Super Nintendo. But well, we just played eight. I hope for Kirby's sake. <laughs> it is we don't not a that, Kirby game. We don't get that little pink fuck again. Yeah, uh, if, it's the only time I hope that there's not a sucking off for next week. So uh, we're going to see you next week. New game. Uh, new uh, us? No, nope. Same old us. Sorry. <laughs> uh, same stupid ass people. Uh, see you guys. See ya.